Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody clap hands for Jesus. Shout with a voice of triumphant. Shout for Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Turn to somebody next to you. Say, neighbor, welcome to the presence of the Lord. Say, neighbor, this is the best place for you to be on a Wednesday evening in the presence of the Lord. If you believe that, shout hallelujah as you take your seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good to be here in the Pan-Africa Prophetic Conference. Hallelujah. In hosted by House of Revival. Let's clap hands for them in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Men of God, thank you. We really appreciate you. And uh, may God continue to use you in a supernatural way as he's always used you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I get to what I'm here for, I want to just introduce uh, people that I came with who accompanied me here to the service today. The first person I'll introduce, like the pastor has said, is my wife. I think they've already told you that we have been together for more than 33 years now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Let's talk to today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And uh, I came with my second son, my second born, Joshua. Stand up, Josh. <laughs> if you see me with this kind of hair, they are the ones who do me this kind of hair. They've told me in this house, no one will grow old. I try to resist and resist. His big brother is the master of this kind of thing. At least I'm downgrading now because I've got this little one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And also, uh, Pastor is here. Maybe I will just ask Pastor Spanda to stand and let's see him. And his Mrs. Spanda, who is our pastor there in Togoza. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome, Pastor. And maybe I'll ask Power and Praise Ministries to stand up. Glory to God. I will not call you all by names. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stand up to me, Lord. Stand up and stand up. Hallelujah. Didn't say wave at me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's clap hands for them as they take their seats. And thank you very much uh, to the servants of God who are here. And uh, we don't take it lightly that uh, servants of God can stop what they are doing and come and attend a service. And it shows that God is at work, number one, where the, uh, 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 the vultures are. Glory to God. That means there is a carcass in there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you so much for coming and uh, taking your time to come and hear what God is saying. I believe that uh, this Pan-African prophetic gathering, God is a setup for us. Amen. Hallelujah. God is always having a set up for what he wants to say to us as Africans. Amen. It's not called Pan-African because it's poetry. It's Pan-African because we want to raise up Africans who are going to take territory. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are going to occupy space and take territory and be recognized because you are not lesser a person. You are a child of God. You are God's favorite. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, Simon, the one who helped carry Jesus, was an African. Hallelujah. C carry Jesus' cross was an African. If Jesus could ask for help from an African, it means you are very important. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't ever take your seat lightly. You are very, very important before God. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Psalms uh, 42 from verse 1 maybe to verse 5. Let's see what God will uh, say this evening. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm trying to look at my time. Who is my timer? <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I've been taught to observe time. Hey, my, 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 my father in the Lord, he doesn't choke with time. <laughs> If you stay for one minute on the stage, you will never see that stage again. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> but let's read the Bible here. 
As a tear pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. I'm reading from the New King James. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been food day and night, while they continually say to me, Where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with the multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Verse 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him for ye help, for the help of his countenance. Hallelujah. I'm going to maybe give a subject to my teaching. I normally don't give a subject, but I'll just give a subject. Hallelujah. A subject to my teaching is discovering hope in the midst of struggle. Discovering hope in the midst of struggle. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. That the way, your word is life to them that find it. The beginning of our journey is the word that we have inside of us. Father, we thank you, O oh God, that this word, O oh Father, as it drops down, O oh God, Father, let it fall on good ground. And this ground, Father, let it continue to produce fruit. Not only just fruit, but fruit that will remain. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we bind every spirit of hindrance to hear the word. And we cast it out of this place. And we release a spirit of liberty. In the mighty name of Jesus, that the people of God will receive the word of God with joy. And I will apply it in their lives. And it will produce for them. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, this psalm that I read right now, Psalms 42, it is understood that it is a psalm that was written or sang by the children of Korah. And uh, 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 it is also said that the master or who when the, one of them sang it, but Asaph corrected the psalm because Asaph was chosen by David to become a psalmist in the house of God, in the kingdom. Now, in the olden day, you were not just appearing in the worship team because you have a voice. You better be a psalmist. You are in the stage because God speaks to you and downloads a song through you so that you are able to sing it and the people of God get inspired. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Asaph was one of those people. And why, why are these children of Korah uh, becoming the psalmist, becoming the instrumentalist, becoming the musician, becoming the great people? Their father was very important in the rulership of the Jewish family. He was one of the big guys around Moses' cabinet. And he ruled and ruled, but later he disobeyed instruction from Moses. He disobeyed, he started arguing, says, well, you call yourself a prophet. We are also a prophet. We also prophesy. You call yourself an apostle. Only pastor preaching every Sunday in this church. We also want to preach. That was Korah. He managed to win some few people in the church there who seconded him and said, no, but this week it's you. No, 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 no. no. If the pastor doesn't allow you to preach, this week it's about you. So Moses just steps aside, allowed them to do what they wanted. But they did not understand that the servant of God is kept by the grace of God. Moses was busy with his own business when God picked him up from what he was doing and says, come here and I want to use you. This is what happens in Africa these days. We've got everybody who can quote a scripture calling themselves a pastor, running around and apostling everything with no anointing and no grace. That is why we are in a mess like this. It's not about quoting scriptures. Glory to God. It's about God using you as his own vessel at his own will, at his own time. The way he wants and the way he wants to. Hallelujah. This way we have missed it also in Africa as well. Where we, we, we just feel like uh, you know what, uh, we, 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 anybody can wake up in the morning uh, and suddenly he, is, uh, he buys a chair, he buys ten chairs, uh, pick up a tent uh, and call the neighborhood uh, and start a church. That's what we think. Look at the Moses himself. 40 years living in Pharaoh's house. He knew he had a calling. And God says, now it's time for the, the Moses ran away for another 40 years. Go and ask the real men of God. They don't even want to be in the pulpit. Ask them. The real ones. 
They don't want to be in the pulpit. Because their program was disrupted. Programs were disrupted. They were busy with their things. And God removed them from what they were doing. And put them in a place of trial and tests. And let me tell you, people of God, God will test you. I said he will try you. I said he will try you. So now, children of Korah himself disobeyed. And all of a sudden, Moses prayed. Do you know what happened? The earth opened and swallowed him with all his generation. He was swallowed up on the earth. Glory to God. That's why we need to value a true prophetic word. When you hear a prophetic word, it's not poetry, people of God. Hear what the woman is saying right now. It was declared last night. Uh, within 24 hours, uh, suddenly an answer has come. That is prophetic. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. If you have it, you don't struggle with it. Uh, I said you don't struggle with it. <laughs> if it's on you, you don't struggle with it. <laughs> uh, you don't look for it. Uh, you don't go around searching and trying to look for people to prophesy. It is in you. You declare the word. Uh, it comes to pass. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As I stand here today, uh, I'm going to be speaking some words uh, that are going to be prophetic uh, because some of us uh, might not be able to know your name, but let me tell you, whatsoever we decree, uh, it comes to pass uh, because it's an agreement with God. Uh, God says, listen, I'll pull you out from where you are. I'll put you here and you become my mouthpiece. Uh, whatsoever you say. That's why we are very careful what we say because it might come to pass, whether good or bad. <laughs> are you together? <laughs> Glory to God. But thank God for House of Revival. Here you hear the word of God. Good things come out of this altar. Good things are predicted out of this altar. In the mighty name of Jesus. But later, the children of Korah knew the history. They did not go with the father when the father was becoming rebellious. They decided to stay away. But later, the father has been swallowed up with the whole generation. They are remaining alone. They begin to seek for the face of God. That's why he goes to Psalm 42 and says, My soul panted for you, Lord, like a day panted for the water. My soul pants for you. Like my soul, like a, 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 my soul is thirsty for you, you God. How many thirsty believers do I have in the house today who are not just coming to church to mark a register, who are not just coming to church so that they can be seen that they are around. People who are thirsty for God, hungry for God. In your bedroom, you are hungry for God. In the taxi you are going to work, you are hungry for God. In your workplace, you are hungry for God. You hear that some things are going bad in the company. You don't blame the manager. You go around the, 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 the desk and you begin to speak speak to God uh, and say, Lord, remember me, Lord, uh, because I'm in this company of oh God. Uh, let it not go down. Uh, Lord, uh, you are my God, uh, the lifter of my soul. Uh, Father, you lifted up my soul. Uh, lift up the soul of this business. Uh, in the, I need hungry people who are going to be Africans, uh, who are going to pray and change your situation around, uh, change your status around uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, let me tell you, let me ask you a question. Uh, when people look at you, Today, what do they say? When they look at you, do they say God is awesome? Or do they say where is your God? When they look at you, what do they say? Do they say, wow, God is awesome? Or do they say, what? Where is your God? Let me tell you, as a born again believer, it's a mockery to God to live a life of shame. As a born again believer, it's a mockery to God to live a life of defeat. When they look at you, what do they say? Do they say, Your God is awesome, or where is your God? It's an apology. To live a life of problems and continuous persecution. Asaf found himself asking questions. He found his, his life also becoming a question mark. Where people are saying, where is your God? They said, yeah, you know what, Asafa? Your father did this. Uh, that is why your things are not going very well. Uh, your grandmother did this. Uh, that's why your things are not going. So he found his life uh, like a question marker. Uh, 
Then he began to ask, he began to seek for the face of God. He began to look for the uh, uh, glory of God. He began to look for the heart of God. He began to knock the door of God. He began to seek the glory of God. He did not complain against God, but he says, Lord, I'm not going to complain. My situation looks like I'm divine, but I'm not complaining, oh Lord. I'm seeking for your face. I'm seeking for your glory. I'm seeking for your power. I'm seeking for your help. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, these days we have got many believers who are complaining instead of praying. People of God, complaining is not praying. Complaining is not praying. I said complaining is not praying. I'm trying to help somebody here. You switch on the TV. Bad news are coming there. What do you say in your spare room? This government, you're already complaining. You're already complaining. <laughs> you can pray until a change comes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> are you understanding me? I said, he did not complain against God. He did not blame God. He knew that God is still a healer. God is still a lifter of men. God is still a restorer. God can restore that which the enemy has destroyed. God can restore. He knew that this God that I serve, he restores. Though my father did not obey instruction, but restoration is coming in the name of Jesus Christ. I said restoration is coming. He knew that this God is a deliverer. He will deliver me. He knew that this God is still a provider. Is there any believer right now who doesn't know where to get the money for rent? Let me announce to you today, this God that you are gathered here for, he is still a provider. He will provide your needs. He will fight for you. Is there a believer right now who the battle is too big for them. They don't know where to run to. Let me tell you something. He says, cast all your burdens unto me for I care for you. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Then he reminds you again. He says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek for my face. Seek for the face of God. Seek for the power of God. Seek for the help of God. Seek for God and seek my face. Turn away from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from above and I will heal their land. Let me talk to you right now. There's a land that needs healing. Your personal land you needs some healing. Your business needs some healing. Your marriage needs some healing. Your life needs some healing. Your finances need some healing. If you can seek for the face of God, the help of God, I tell you today, God is on your side. I said, God is on your side. Ah, you're not hearing me. God is on your As I've said, Lord, arise on my behalf, O oh God. Let the doors that were shut be open. Arise on my behalf, my Father. Where there's a way, where there's a way, make a way. Where they seem like there's no way. Is there anybody right now here? Who feels like his slippery is dark? There is no way. Talk to him and say, Arise on my behalf, oh God. Make a way where they seem like there's no way. Arise on my behalf, oh God. They say I'll be defeated, but I'm not God. I cannot be defeated. I cannot be defeated. I cannot be defeated. You need to speak like David, who says, I'm a child of God. Goliath cannot defeat me. I don't care how giant he is, he cannot bring me down. Why? Because I'm called of God and I'm born of God. My face resembles God. Why? Because God says, if I spend some time in his word, I be all like in a mirror. Every time I read the word, I slightly become like the word. Every time I believe the word, I become like the word. Finally, I'm the word of God. Whatsoever I say comes to pass. I believe I hear. Is there a believer here right now who wants to be like God? Because he says, let me tell you something. In the Psalms 92, he says, did I not say that you are God and you are the children of the Most High God? Do you know why? He says, you are God over a problem. You are God over a sinner. You are God over situations. Did I not tell you that you are God but you are, and you are children of the Most High? But you shall die like them. Why? Because you don't understand who you are. Ah, African baby. African child, uh, understand who you are. I said, understand who you are. Rise up and confess the word. Uh, 
Rise up and confess the word. He said, the word is alive in me. The word gives me life. In the name of Jesus. Clap those hands and shout hallelujah. I said, shout hallelujah. Have you ever prayed and you are crying? Have you ever quoted the word, read the word, and you are crying? Your tears are on the Bible. The Bible is wet. Whether you are reading from the phone, you see the tears drop on that phone. You miss your appetite of food and you are fasting. And you know why? You are saying this situation must change. This situation must change. Satan, you are a liar. You will not make God a liar through my life. Never allow Satan to make God a liar through your life. <laughs> he is an accuser of the brethren. He will give you problems until you give up. And then Satan can say, you see, I told you, you are a liar. You said you will help them. You can't even help them. Don't allow Satan to make God a liar through your life. Because you are still waiting for help from somewhere. God is already present. He says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. Call upon me. He didn't say call the police. He didn't say call the, uh, your ancestors. He didn't say call your uncles. He says, call upon me. You know why? Because he knew a day of trouble will come. That's why he put it in the Bible. That not my children will go through trouble. But call upon me in the day of trouble. He didn't say call upon me in the day of your wedding. He says in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. That's why if we don't believe the word, we don't spend time in the word, somebody will have malaria. You know when you have malaria, you've got strange dreams. Very strange dreams. When you are hit with malaria, you will dream like you are swimming in the air. When you wake up in the morning, you say, I was in heaven. While we're having malaria. And then you start talking many things. Because we don't have the word, we start believing you. You pulling us away until one day you surprise us when you have already dragged us away and now we are with you. And say, now everybody take off your clothes now and we are going to walk naked now because we are the children of God. And you'll do that. Because you don't have a word. The word you behold it like a mirror. Mirror. If Pastor Duve preaches today and don't find it in the word, don't, don't take it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If I preach, it doesn't matter whether you stand up and sit down and say hallelujah. If you get home and don't find it in the word, just throw that someone away and say that man was mad. Where is it in the word? Because this word says do not add and do not separate. Do you think Jesus is stupid when that he can leave some other things and then send me now to come and finish up the Bible to the people? That's Africa for you. That's why we have a pan-African prophetic gathering. Where we go back to God's word. Where we go back to believing the word of God. Uh, so that the word of God, the same miracles uh, that Abraham experienced, uh, we must experience them. Uh, same miracles. Uh, Moses, listen to me. Moses walked uh, in the dry land in the Red Sea. It's not poetry. It's not a fake story. It's a real story. Why is it not happening now? Why is it not happening now? Elijah prayed that there would be no rain. There was no rain. Until later he was now thirsty himself. <laughs> God said, listen, I honored your word because I prophet, but that, that prophet of yours, that was, uh, that was a very funny prophet. Well. Right, right, I'm not going to, because I said I'm going to honor every word that you speak. Three years now, no rain. Nothing. No vegetables, nothing. Until God says, listen, go and sit in the bush. There's some ravens will bring you something. You said until the ravens also were thirsty now, they couldn't come anymore. God said, now finally, go to your widow woman now. 
God is every woman, and uh, you can ask for some food there. He made everybody broke now. Everybody's broken now because of the prophets. Now go back to the woman where you feed you. Now you went back now with this prophetic word. It says, woman, give me first <laughs> to eat. <laughs> Let me eat first <laughs> before I prophesy. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> he was going back to his original position. Hallelujah. Then he spoke the word. Uh, things happened. Uh, but for him uh, and the widow woman in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, may things happen for you today. Uh, as we declare the word of God. Uh, may it happen for you today. Tell somebody today uh, and say, listen neighbor, I'm not made for shame. I'm not made for breakdown. I'm made for signs and I'm made for wonders. I came to tell somebody today, it's time to put devil under pressure. It's time to do situation under pressure. It's time to put problems under pressure. Listen, uh, devil must be put under pressure today in the name of Jesus Christ. We need to put him under pressure. You must hear that in Prakpana, there in House of Revival, uh, pressure is coming upon you. We are pushing him pressure. We are he's going to run for his life today in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, devil, uh, I came to make you run out of my life. Uh, I'll run you out of my situation. Uh, I'll run you out of my business. Uh, I'll run you out of my finances. I'll run you out of my church now in the name of Jesus. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll run you out. We're going to run him out. David says, when cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord. <laughs> Who made heavens and earth. Uh, some trust in chariots. Uh, some trust in horses. Uh, some trust in their uncles. Uh, some trust in their political parties. Uh, some trust in their friends. Uh, but I trust in the Lord. Uh, I trust in the Lord. I trust in the Lord. Uh, my help cometh from the Lord. Uh, my help cometh from the Lord. Uh, my help cometh from the Actually, when he quoted, it says, I will look unto the hills from where cometh my help. Then he remembered, ah, 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 ah. In the hills, they practice witchcraft. That's not where I must look for. Get the revelation. For some of you like that, I will look unto the hills from where cometh my No, he was asking a question. He said, no, my help cometh from the Lord, not from the hills. Because in that dispensation, those who went to the hills were practicing witchcraft. And they were getting their own help. So David was saying, even if the situation is tough, should I go to the hills? No. My help coming from the Lord. My help coming from the Lord. If I perish, let me perish. I will not subject myself to this kind of life. Because there's Africans... When we are under pressure, we always say, our culture says, our culture allows this. That's Africa for you. Our culture says, Pastor, this, this, this week is Nom Sevens. For the benefit of others, we can hear this week, this week we've got work. We call it Nom Sevens. We've got, a, a, we've, got, we've got a ceremony. It's a ceremony. We are not coming to church this Sunday, Pastor's Nom Sevens. What is being worked there? Because by the end of the sermon, everybody is drunk. They can't even remember what was happening. <laughs> As Africans, believers, go to that event and go and shine the light. Uh, did you hear what I said? I didn't say don't go. Go there. Actually, be the first to arrive. Walk around in the place and go. Mare katalaba salekata. Angels surround this place now. Surround this place now. Anything of witchcraft uh, that will ever be practiced here, we nullify it by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, only what is of God uh, must prevail in Jesus' name. Then we say we're going to open with prayer. To make a short, don't make those religious long prayers. Make a short prayer. Say, Father, we are here. We have come. Take over in Jesus' name. Amen. Pan Africa gathering. As Africans, we must go take territory. I said, we must take territory. Are, are you hearing what I said? We must take territory. 
David says, where I, 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 my help come from, he did not see a change, but he still continued believing God. There was no change coming, but he believed God. He says, my help cometh from the Lord. I know that God is real. Job says, all the days of my appointed time, will I wait until my change comes? <laughs> Listen, Job had lost everything. You have just lost a wallet. You just lost a wallet yourself or a phone. Job lost everything. The richest man from the east lost everything. Lost his wives. I'm glad it was during Job's time. <laughs> they don't give us the number. Because in those olden days, once you have money, you just hear a truckload of women being delivered in your house. So they, they, are, they are here now. <laughs> You'll take care of them. He lost all of them. He lost all the children. He lost all the Lamborghinis. Camel is, is the value of a Lamborghini. He had a Bentley. Had all the, he lost everything. And they started having boils. Getting sick. His wife, before she died, said, my friend, let's go to the hills now. There's a woman who helps people around here. Let's go and see her. Job says no. All the appointed times of my life, I will wait until my change comes. Then the woman went alone and she never returned. <laughs> Later in life, his friends came. He said, Job, maybe, maybe, man of God, maybe there's some things that you did before God. You might not know. You might have sinned before God. Why don't you take a sin offering and take it aside? Job was trying to look around. What did I do? I don't know. Maybe I think he even took a, 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 a because he had nothing now. He maybe took a dove to, to, to the altar. He said, no, I'm here. I don't know what I've seen. Lord, forgive me for the sins I know and sins I do not know. And God was silent. And that was his problem, Job. The first problem he did when Satan presented himself in church and the sons of God came to church where was Job? Where was he on Sunday? Satan came, sons of God came to church where God was. And Satan also came to discuss the future of Job. And Job was not in church. African believers who only go to church by temperature. If your temperature is low, you are not coming. If your temperature is high, you are not coming. If it's around 36, 37, that's when you sneak in and sneak out. Satan is already presenting himself before the Lord to discuss your future. Listen to what Satan says. Satan says, God, I see Job. He's busy doing other things. If you remove the protection, I will mesmerize him. I will deal with him. The only thing I'm afraid of God is not him. I'm afraid of the hedge you put around him. Remove it. You will see. I will fix him. I will fix him until he knows that the devil cannot be played around with. Job was busy doing other things. Sacrificing for his children. Sacrificing for his business. Sacrificing for many things. He says, no, in case my children are messing up and they, they were drunk. I mean, he was, he was loaded. You could give his children money to go and have a nice time. And then he says, in case they were drunk, maybe they insulted God. Let me go and sacrifice. Doing God's work without God. <laughs> Busy doing God's work without God. That's what we do as African believers. Pastor, I'm not coming this weekend. It's a men's conference. We are going to a men's conference. Ah. Go on Monday or on Tuesday. On Sunday. Tell whoever did a men's conference on Sunday. That is very rebellious. You can't do a men's conference with other people's members. You must do it his own. You don't even lead a warm cell in the church. Now you are preaching in a men's conference. You are preaching in a women's conference. What are you talking about there? You are doing God's work without God. 
and the devil is coming to the same place where God planted you to discuss about your future. That was not part of the sermon. That's why I said prophetically, God can speak once here and there, and then we, we move on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Job said, <laughs> Oh, the appointed day time, I will wait till my turn come. You didn't bring this, me this far, Lord, uh, to disappoint me. You didn't bring me this far, Father, to make me mockery. I am confident in you that you are the pillar that holds my life. Uh, you are the same yesterday. Uh, you are the same today. Uh, you are the same forever. You are the same God uh, that visited Hannah when Hannah had no child. Uh, you are the same God uh, that visited Noah. You taught him to build an ark. Lord, uh, teach my whole hands uh, to war. Teach my hands to fight, Lord. Uh, Teach my hands, Father, to be productive uh, because you taught Noah to build an ark. Uh, you can teach me as well, Lord. I'm your child. Uh, I am your child, oh God. Uh, he did not complain. Job. He confronted God by his word. When you call to God using his word, he will answer you. When you go to God using his word, you, you will not disappoint you. Job refused to give up. He refused to give up. I've lost everything. Listen, from Job chapter 1 to Job chapter 42, it's many years. Eh? Many years of suffering. Why would God not trust such a man and give him a double a blessing when the man never forsook him? Not even one day did Job say, I'm tired of church. This problem came. If you read, I think around Job 38, where Job says, I have, I have heard about you. I had heard about you, O Lord. Now I know you. So it means all along, Job was always hearing about God, not having a personal experience with God. African church, we know about God. We have heard about him. But we don't know him personally. In our church, I always do prayer. I say, if you stay for six months and God has not done anything for you here, find another church. Ask them. Ask them. I tell you. Find some way where God will do. Maybe you are in the wrong address. Because here, yeah, God works. So we need to know him personally. Are we together? We need to know him personally. So he refused to give up. He said, my situation will not end like this. My story will not end like this. Say, tell your neighbor, say, my story will not end like this. Though my beginning is small, yet my later end shall be great. Talk like job like that. Talk like job like that. Uh. Say, though my beginning is small, uh, yet my later end uh, shall be great. I'm struggling, I'm suffering right now, but let me tell you something, oh God, I'm persuaded uh, that he who did a, started a good work in me shall see it come to completion uh, in, a, in, the, in the day of Jesus Christ. You look at me and say, I'm struggling. Yes, I'm struggling right now. I'm suffering right now. But I know that my Redeemer liveth. <laughs> he started a good work in me. You will see it come to completion. Do not give up on God, people of God. Don't give up on the promises of God. His promises are yes. Let me help you again there. His promises are yes. They need an amen from you. God cannot say amen to himself. Because amen says, let it be so. He comes to you, a minister Jabu, and then he says, my promises are yes. You see that? Yeah, yeah he did it. He said it. Yeah. So God says, my promises are yes. You see that? That's how it works. That's how the scripture works. He, that's how he, does, he can't say amen to himself. He wants an amen from you in the name of Jesus Christ. I said he wants an amen. That's why amen is very important in church. If you don't say amen in church, where do you say amen? Because there's no other place where you must say amen except in church. 
So in this prophetic gathering, you must learn to say amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Says I'm struggling right now. I'm suffering right now. But I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded that he's able to keep the promises. Then you begin to you, you then you begin to change. You begin to see that Zulu cannot help you anymore. Tswana cannot help you. Sudo English cannot help you. Then you begin to go in tongues right now. You begin to speak in the other tongues. You can go on for an hour. You can go on for one hour. You can go on for two hours. Do you know what? When you speak in tongues, you are not speaking to yourself. You are speaking to God. When you begin to connect with God, something must drop in the name of Jesus Christ. Something must drop. I said something must drop. Glory to God. Glory to God. You don't care who is next to you. They cannot help you. You don't care who is listening to you. They cannot help you. What you are saying cannot make sense. You know why? Because burdens are lifted at Calvary. What you say cannot make sense. But burdens are lifted at Calvary. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, excuse me. I might start making noise right now. It might not make sense. But burdens are lifted at Calvary. Say, neighbor, I did not come here for you. I came for Jesus. If you believe, I shout hallelujah. Let me read my last scripture. Proverbs 4 verse 18. But the path of a just is like a shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. You begin to say, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved by what I hear. He that began a good work in me, in me, in me, you, you hold yourself say in me, shall see it come to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. You hold him by his words. I said you hold him by his words. Just tell two people next to you, they say, I'm not going to lose this battle. Tell them, tell them, I'm not going to lose this battle. I will not lose this battle. I will not lose the battle. I'm more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in me than the one who is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than the devil in the world. If God is for me, who can be against me? They shall come one way and they shall be on the other way in seven ways. For he that is born of God overcometh. And this is the victory of our faith. As I said, I will look for him as if he was lost. I will look for him. My situation is bad. I will look for him. I know he's not lost, but I'm going to look for him. Remember, David sought for the Lord and the Lord found him. So who was lost? The one who was looking. God has never been lost. But sometimes we are the ones who are lost, so we must make a U-turn and seek for him now where he is because he never left where he was. Isaiah says, I will look for his face. But I will look for him. It seems his face is hidden, but I will look for him. Satan wants you to be discouraged. But you must not be discouraged. Tell yourself, I've set my hand on the plow and I cannot let go. Hold the Lord by his hand. You do not know a man of faith until he's confronted with a situation. You do not know a woman of faith until she's confronted with a situation. Especially women. If you want to know a woman of faith, give them a situation. You will know that this is a praying woman and this one is just a... They will pray. They will pray. They will pray the church to capacity. Because they understand they've got a womb inside. Women, God has given you a blessing, a womb to birth. That womb is not to birth children only, it's to birth destinies. It's to birth destinies. That's why you must be an intercessor in the church. 
That's why you must intercede in your house. That's why when even when the couples have no food, don't say, where is he? He doesn't even bring food. No, go to those couples, open them up and say, from today, I decree right now, you couples, you are going to occupy, you are going to be occupied with food. I speak prophetically that there's going to be food in this house. By this time tomorrow, food will come. Hold your card in the air and say, by this time tomorrow, money will locate my bank account in the name of Jesus Christ. It looks like it doesn't make any sense. But spiritually, it's making sense uh, because there are some things uh, that are in the atmosphere which are blocking your progress. Uh, you can only unlock them by prayer. Let's rise up on our feet. I'm not sure about my time. Am I okay? Glory to God. When you begin to pray in tongues, then you watch what comes out from that situation. Complaining will lower the call of God upon your life. Shout, I'm made for signs and wonders. I said, shout, man. I said, shout, I'm made for signs and wonders. Imagine yourself on the Thanksgiving day returning with a testimony. I want you to imagine yourself uh, on that Thanksgiving day. Uh, you are returning with a testimony. They said you are now losing your house. Uh, but on the Thanksgiving day, uh, they said there's a time where I was about to lose my house. Uh, but look at what God has done for me. I can imagine yourself uh, coming to dedicate that baby that they said you will never carry in your hands. Uh, I, I said you must imagine it in the name of Jesus Christ. Because parents are lifted at Calvary. When you seek for the face of God, you will remember the scripture that says, he that goeth weeping, carrying precious seed, shall doubtlessly come, rejoicing and bringing in the sheep. Switch to the future in this prophetic gathering. Imagine yourself standing before the doubters who doubted you. Say, yeah, I am. Imagine yourself standing in front of those doubters. Imagine yourself standing in front of your accusers. And God says, you are free. God says to Abraham, as far as you can see, I will give it to you. You need to see far to your future. You need to see far to Houting. Away from how you need to see far. People of God, life does not revolve around Brother Ban. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Life does not revolve around Egurulen. Life does not revolve around Gauteng. Life does not revolve around South Africa. Neither life does not revolve around Africa alone. Your God is a global God. As far as you can see, I will give it to you. As far as you can see. See yourself running a mega operation, international business. See yourself becoming an, an executive, international executive. See yourself addressing in the United Nations Day, coming from Prakpan, coming from the small village in South Africa. See yourself over there. Why? Because as far as you can see, you believe the words. As far as you can see, I'll give it to you. No matter the battle, you must stand your ground. You are not created for a natural life. You are created for a life of signs and wonders. You are not created for a natural life. We have reduced ourselves to natural lives. When there is flu, all of us catch flu. We forget that we are not natural. We are spirit in motion. We must learn to do natural things supernaturally and supernatural things naturally. Yes, cancer will come. But if it hits your body, you begin to say, who are you, thou uncircumcised Philistine, in my body? I curse you now in the name of Jesus. You curse it until it goes. 
because it has a voice, it hears. That's why it came, it was told, go there. So it must be told, get out. Some of you have funerals every month or every year at a certain month in your family. I'm telling you, you need to go after this service. Go to your home and begin to talk to the, to the dead. Say, dead, you have been knocking here every year. You are no longer welcome here. You are no longer welcome in this address. You are not welcome. We punish you. Never come back again in the name of Jesus Christ. It looks like you are not making sense. But let me tell you something. You are speaking prophetically. And it will cease and it will stop. And Africans, we need to speak to situations here in our country. Every day we wake up in the morning, seven children were shot. Seven children in an accident. Eighteen people were shot dead. Someone, someone, every day. We must speak to it. Don't say it's no longer safe here. No. Speak to the this situation. And we're going to bring safety by our voices. You might not come out on the newspaper that you prayed, but let me tell you something. Uh, your weight carries power. A thousand shall fall at thy right hand. Ten thousand, but it shall not come near you. See why I'm saying you must pray. You need to pray. It will not come near you. It will not come near your children. It will not come near your mother. It will not come near your uncles. It will not come near your church. Because you're praying. Let's lift up our hands right now. It's a day panted for the water brooks. So panted my soul. Lord, I'm thirsty and I'm hungry for you. I want one who is hungry for God to lift up their voice. Say, Lord. Today I increase my hunger for you, Lord. I increase my thirst. I will seek for you, Lord. I will seek for you in the day. I will seek for you in the night, Lord. Lord, do not leave me behind, oh God. I want to catch up with you, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Take me to where I've never been before. Touch him, touch him, touch him. for God, thirsty for God, thirsty for him. I'm thirsty for you, Lord. I'm thirsty for you, Lord. Lord, I will increase. 
increase my speed. My rhythm of souls, Lord, is going to increase. My commitment, Father, to your house will increase. In the mighty name of Jesus, talk to him now. Talk to him now. Just talk to him. Open a voice. Open a mouth and talk to him. You are born from it. So you carry the DNA of God. You carry the DNA of Jesus Christ. So your natural birth is okay, but your supernatural birth, which is a born again experience, is bigger than that. That means you are unkillable. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> you are unkillable. Hey, that pastor is preaching heresy. No. I'm like Jesus. I'm born of Jesus. Even at the cross, they couldn't kill him. He had to give up the ghost. Because he was unkillable. He had to say, okay, fine. Lord, I hand over my spirit. Doesn't matter which sickness you are going through right now. You declared your sickness, you will not kill me. I'm healed in the name of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you today, help is on the way right now. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Help is on the... If you are here this evening and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, whatever I'm saying, it might make some sense, but you can't just walk back home after hearing such kind of a word hearing the word, the enemy knows that you have already got the keys to your success. And he will wait. If you don't accept Jesus Christ, he waits and he will pounce on you so that you can make God a liar. I don't want to be a very ungenerous person where I want to enjoy the blessings of the Lord alone. I want to invite you today. I want to invite you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus 
left heaven. He came down on earth. He dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. And then when he came, he says, I'm the bread of life that came down from heaven. If anybody eats of me, they will not die. He preached among us. He dwelt among us. Then it came a time where he says, it is profitable for you that I go away. Because if I'm still here, the power of God, the Holy Spirit will not come upon you. Once I go away, then you will know that I am the door. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but except by me. So if you accept Jesus Christ today as your personal Savior, you have entered the door. I said you have entered the door. The door of your blessing, the door of your success. I want every eye closed right now. All of us close our eyes. If you are here this evening, you're saying, Pastor, pray with me. I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior so that I can enjoy the benefits of salvation because there are benefits of salvation. There's a new life. There's eternal life. There's walking in the newness of life. There's in filling of the Holy Spirit. Those are benefits of salvation. There's forgiveness of sins. Those are benefits of salvation. So if you are here right now and you are saying, Pastor, pray with me. Show me by lifting up your right hand with every eye closed and every head bowed. Just lift your head high. Just lift your hand high. Just lift it high. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. And with those hands high, just come to me, right? Just come to me. Just come to me. Just come to me. I just help them. Come, come, mama. Come, come to me. Come to me. Just come, just come, just come, just come. Church, just clap hands and encourage them. Just come to Jesus. Ashes, please help them. Help them, Ashes. God bless you. 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 God bless you, mama. God bless you. 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 If you're still there at the back, don't be, be afraid of anybody. Nobody is a heaven for you here. Nobody can die for you. Even me as a pastor, I cannot die for you. But I'm inviting you to come to Jesus Christ who died for you at the cross. Over 30 years ago, 33 years, it was 34 years ago, I also had a message and I came running to the front. I gave my life to Jesus. I didn't care who was looking at me because I needed change in my life. And my life was never the same again. So some of you are here. You are in the conference now. Yeah? You want to renew your, your, your life again. Uh, I'm not saying you are under condemnation. You are not under condemnation. But you are saying, I want assurance of salvation. You can also come and join them. And then we can pray with you. Then you are assured of your salvation. That the blessing of the Lord, they make it rich. And they add no sorrow with it. So if you are here also, come and join them. Come and join them as I pray. all of us to lift up our hands. Let's lift up our hands to Jesus. This is not a law, but this is just me. I just always say, if we are surrendering our life to Jesus, we do like we are surrendering to God. Are we together? When somebody points a gun at you, we lift up our hands, isn't it? We are surrendering. So we are now saying, Lord, we are surrendering our lives to you, Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I confess all my sins. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to forgive me. Wash me clean. Make me a child of God. Lord Jesus, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Write my name in the book of life. Today I confess Lord Jesus is my Lord and as my Savior. Father, I thank you for forgiving me and for accepting me as your child in Jesus' name. Say, Holy Spirit, help her from above. I welcome you right now into my life. Come and help me to live a life that is pleasing to God and pleasing to myself. Help me to walk this journey of salvation. Strengthen me. Help me to understand the word of God. Help me to pray 
in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that I have accepted you as my Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you have accepted me as your child. In Jesus' name. Amen. Church, I want us to celebrate Jesus because the Bible says there's joy in heaven of a one who repents. And then let's join the angels in heaven in jubilance. Amen. I want to tell you right now, precious people of God, in this service, you are the most precious people in the service. I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not trying to think. You are the most precious. If we gather here and nobody accepts Jesus Christ, we're just having coffee somewhere. But if you see people come to Jesus, the Bible says there's joy in heaven. Angels are standing up there dancing right now. They are not dancing for us. They are dancing for you. Welcome to the kingdom of God. God bless you. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, mama. Welcome, my mother. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I, I, I take pleasure when I see our mothers like this coming to Jesus. Because the whole family will run to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So what's going to happen, uh, the ushers or the ministers are going to take your details down. We are not going to use that information for anything else. But that information is to communicate with you, send you some scriptures, and maybe give you a phone call, and then see where you stay, and then maybe if you need any assistance, or prayer and things like that, they can help you. Amen. Amen. But you are welcome to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I think the ushers will go. Yes. There's a mother there, a minister there at the back. Just, just look at her. Just look at her. Yeah, just look at her. You see her? Yeah, you follow her. You can follow her and go 